be a make or break day in the Michael Jackson case. Another accuser in the Jackson case held his own under heated cross-examination by Jackson's attorney, Thomas Mesero, yesterday. The son of a housekeeper who worked for Jackson described in detail three incidents. Two where he says Jackson touched his genitals over his clothing while tickling him, and one where he says Jackson touched him under his clothes, all of it more than 10 years ago. Today, Thomas Mesereau tried to poke holes in that story by asking the now young man to recall statements he made in four separate interviews about the incidents of alleged abuse. Mesereau going after the witness about varying accounts he supposedly gave to prosecutors, jumping from interview to interview, clearly confusing the witness. At one point, the judge had to step in warning Mesereau, quote, you're going to have to direct, if you're going to question in this manner, you're going to have to direct it to specific times. There were three interviews. Okay, I'm sorry, Your Honor, Judge. And you're being unfair to the witness, in my opinion. NBC's Mike Taibbi was in the courtroom today, and he joins us. Now, Mike, this sounds great for the prosecution and horrible for Team Jackson. Yeah, I think on its face it does, Dan. There's no question this was a powerful witness. But let me say a couple of things. Number one, your characterization of it being fierce cross-examination, a heated cross-examination, I'm not sure in the courtroom it came out that way. I think it was persistent, and I think, frankly, Tom Mesereau was being very careful in front of a jury that has four Hispanic members, by our estimation, to not jump on this very sympathetic witness, a very compelling witness, and make it seem as though he was harassing him. There was that one admonition by the judge, as you point out. Two points let me make right now. One, there's a whole lot of case to try in this yet. I'm sure Ron Richards will tell us later that Tom Mesereau is planning a, a substantial defense of the instant case. But the second point is that this old evidence, this so-called 1108 evidence from uncharged uh, events in the past, is extremely powerful. It's either going to prove one pattern or the other either that Michael Jackson is a serial child molester whose grooming activities and prior molestations uh, approve the current case or tend to prove the current case, or he's a serial victim, uh, a secret drunk, uh, as I suggested last week, who uh, maybe is blind to the ways his own words and actions have invited his own victimization. One pattern or the other is going to be proven. Everything's on the table. Now, about the cross-examination today, here's, here's how it went. Three um, quotes from the accuser and how Miserable dealt with it. Cusa said about the second alleged incident, we were watching cartoons again, we were laying in a sleeping bag, Jackson behind me, spooning me. Again, he started with a tickling. It was longer tickling. I wasn't laughing as much this time. He was tickling me from behind in my genital area, and I was laughing and trying to tickle him back. Question, were you aware it was happening while it was happening? Answer, yes. Question, how long did it happen? A, answer, about two cartoons worth. Question, did you feel uncomfortable at the time? Answer, yes and no. No, because it's all fun. It's supposed to be innocent because you're a little kid. But yes, because it's not right. Very powerful on direct. What Mesereau was able to do with that was to bring back the statement this then boy made in his interview all those years ago, in which he said that the tickling lasted about 30 seconds, when under direct he said two cartoons worth would be more than five minutes if he was watching Woody Woodpecker. Small thing. I'm not sure the jury picked that up. Second example. The boy said, now 24-year-old man, in the fifth grade I told my friends I knew Michael Jackson and it was cool. They didn't believe me, but it was cool. In junior high, it was no longer cool to know somebody who had issues with kids. Again, the kind of thing that can resonate with a jury, Mesereau's approach to it. Wait a second, that means you knew about the other big scandal that was ignited in 1993 involving the first major accuser against Jackson, and it turns out that, that the boy or the boy's family did know about that claim, and he did make his statement and get with his own attorneys after all that had happened. Last example. Uh, again, from the boy on direct, he put the money in my shorts because I pulled it out of my shorts, and that's when my mom saw it. And under direct examination by Ron Zonin, the deputy prosecutor, he said he put it inside his shorts. Mesereau uh, later on got the boy to admit, or got the boy's mother to admit, uh, that she in fact took it out of a pocket because she was wearing pants with an outside pocket. My These are small things, but Tom Mesereau couldn't go much harder than Mike, that. Mike, stay with me, because uh, my take, we'll I've said it before, I'll say it again. If Jackson gets convicted, I think it will be based on the power.